Hey everybody, welcome back to Rock Titan Live. I'm Scotty J. We have got an awesome guest with us right now. For all you drummers out there, you know, and artists enthusiasts alike, this guy that we've got with us, John Douglas, this guy, he, he's done it all. All right. He, he's an amazing artist and we're going to touch upon, you know, the history he's got and some of the amazing things that he's created over the years. Uh, but he's also a phenomenal drummer and uh, there could be no greater evidence of that than how he spent a good part of his summer. John, how are you, sir? I'm great. How are you, Scotty? I'm doing all right. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, this is not the first time we actually had a chance to catch up. You know, this is part two, part two. But, uh, you know, everyone that watches Rock Titan and that knows me, they're like, oh, yeah, all right. You know, that's probably par for the course for this guy. But uh, in any event, I want to ask you one question to kick things off here, John. If you could use one word to describe how your summer was, what would it be? <laughs> uh I'm gonna I'm gonna start playing the Jeopardy music here, you yeah. know, for that ultimate no. question. But uh, no, I know I'm putting you on the spot. I know I'm putting you on the spot, and it's got to be hard to sum up your summer in one word because uh, I guess I'm gonna pick a word for you. Would okay. unexpected be fair? That's ex yeah, that's uh, that's that's totally fair. Uh, I was I was gonna say uh, exciting because that's that's. Uh, it was that as well. It's the whole, you, you know, it's the whole picking one word thing. It's like, ah, that's like pick your 10 favorite albums or, you know. Oh, right, right. So. I know, I know. It, well, uh, you know, for, for everyone that's probably wondering what we're getting at, what we're talking about here, how exactly did you spend your summer? As a drummer, we won't talk touch on uh, art yet, but as a drummer, how, how, what would you do this summer? Well, um, I'm a... Uh, I'm a working drum tech, as you know, so I'm yes. teching for Aerosmith, who most of this year has been doing a, a Vegas residency at the Park MGM. Right. And uh, Joey Kramer, the drummer from Aerosmith, everybody knows, uh, uh, got injured, and so I got the call to jump in and play drums at the like 11th hour. Um, so I've played a few shows with Aerosmith, which is unexpected <laughs> and exciting. <laughs> oh my god i mean it's got to be one thing to be teching for joey you know i mean obviously aerosmith is one of the most iconic rock bands in the history of rock and roll so i'm sure that that's been a great pleasure for you but i mean when they tapped you to said uh yo john you think you could actually do a few entire sets with us what did that feel like when that happened was there any reservation or reluctance that you had to say yes um, you know, actually, I, I'm not even sure they even asked me. I think they told me, I, you know, <laughs> have a blur. Uh, it was a show day and we were, um, I was in the building. Um, obviously we do, a, a, the band doesn't do sound check typically. Uh, so the crew does, we right. do you know, a crew, uh, sound check crew jam. So we had just started that when I got the phone call from, um, from Steven saying that, uh, Joey couldn't play. Wow. And, yeah, I don't. I don't remember actually being asked. I think. <laughs> I think. Um, and you know, I would have said yes. Maybe I was. I, I don't know. But it's just. Uh, I've done this before. Right. As back, you know, with with other bands, um, right. a couple of times. Right. But it had been a while, and it's always. Um, it's all obviously unexpected, and. Um, so it was just a matter of, you know, okay, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine. I mean, that'd be like, you know, any drum tech dream come true, you know? I mean, especially for a band as iconic as Aerosmith. And, you know, it's just, it's one of those things that I would imagine you kind of always dream of doing. You just never ever, it's kind of like the lottery, like the Mega Millions or the Powerball. It's like, you go, you get that ticket, you know, you put some skin in the game, but you don't necessarily think anything of that magnitude is going to come to fruition. But uh, yeah. so, so I'm going to segue a little bit and I'm going to bounce all over the place because, you know, I'm the talk show host with ADD, like on steroids, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but because of the kind of artwork that you do and specifically the fact that you have featured Aerosmith 
in quite a bit of your art, you know, I mean, whether it's, you know, drawings that you've done of Perry or Steve Tyler, of course, Joe Perry's guitar. Um, did your relationship with those guys as an artist predate you being a drum tech with them or did it all kind of happen at the same time? How did that all come to pass? Oh, it definitely predated because I, I painted Joe's Billy guitar. I painted that in 2001. Okay. Um, and I did a drum kit for Joey shortly thereafter, a couple years after that, I think. Um, I painted a drum kit for Joey and I started doing drum heads for him and stuff, um, but never teched for him uh, or, or worked for the band. So I, I've only been working for the band since um, 2013. Okay. So that, that was 12 years after I painted the Billy guitar, wow. you know, that I became, you know, that I started working for the, the band, and specifically Joey. Um, so, um, yeah, so that obviously that definitely predates the teching thing. Sure, and uh, sure. done the painting. Uh, that Joe used for his uh, one of his solo uh, albums. Um, I painted the cover for that. That was that predated working for them as well. So I actually had more of a history with Joe Perry than I did with Joey. Um, so uh, anyway, yeah. Fast forward to 2013, and they needed a drum tech, and I was available. So then I started teching for him. Wow. So so your name is obviously out there, you know, in you know. The rather larger circles, I should say, as far as like drummers that can, you know, be a tech. Because it's not like they're just grabbing any old scrub off the street. So obviously, you've got, you know, a, the credibility that would say, yeah, you know, you're our guy. Now, let me ask you this, you know, because your background is so diverse as an artist, both musician and painter. And uh, what, uh, which one of those passions happened first? Did you like, were you holding drumsticks, you know, as a small tyke before you ever, you know, picked up a paint brush or, you know, a, a, any kind of uh, pen? Cause I know your art's a little bit different, but, uh, what came first, like the art or the drumming? Uh, well, um, I can only go by what my parents used to tell me and that, that is drumming. They, I mean, look, it's way more primitive, you know what I mean? So I, I, I was beating on pots and pans you know, when I was a toddler, um, probably the way before I could even hold a pencil. And that's pretty, pretty typical. I mean, all my, all my kid, every kid, I think bangs on stuff. Sure. Um, I just never stopped. So, <laughs> right. so, you know, the, the draw to, to music and drums in particular is my first love and my greatest passion. I love artwork as well. I would, I would hope to never have to choose one or the other, right. but I will say this: that the uh, the allure of of playing music, playing drums, has always and probably will always outweigh the paint uh, artwork, the paintbrush. It's just something about the the immediacy and the physical aspect, the joy of of, of hitting drums and making music. Um, it's I think it's way more immediate. Than, than artwork. It's a, you know it's a different hits on different uh, pushes different buttons. Sure. So, but you know the first half of my life I did nothing but pursue pursue music, okay. drumming, and I always did artwork as well because they kind of go hand in hand. Every band you're in needs a logo and and, and flyers and you know uh, and then I, I started to, I just wanted my drums to look cool, so I started painting my drums because I wanted my stuff to look cool. Right. So. Uh, it, for me, it was a, a natural progression to to join the two, art and music, uh, because they go hand in hand. Like I said, every every band needs artwork. Um, anyway, that's a long. Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that actually was going to lead me to my next question. So perfect segue there, John. Very nice. So, so has <laughs> so has the work you've done as a drummer? Like when you get these gigs, you know as the drum tech or being a drummer in a band, has that led immediately to you doing artwork for that band at that time? Um, let's see. Well, I mean, the very first teching job I did was for ZZ Top. Um, and at that point, I had been painting drums, uh, actually, and guitars, I think, for them for six or seven years. Oh wow! Uh, they were the first, first band that I painted for because they live here in Houston, where I, I live in Houston. Okay. And 
so uh, I was playing in a pretty popular band around Houston, and the guys from ZZ would come see my band play. Eventually, I met Frank, the drummer, and he commented on my drums that were painted and asked who, who painted them, and uh, I did. And, and he's like, hey, would you ever want to paint some drums for me? And I was like, oh, wow, oh, yeah, okay. So I started painting drums for him. So eventually, when um, the last real band I was in, which was a band uh, called Kick Tracy out of, out of L.A., they, we did a couple albums in the early 90s. And when that band uh, imploded and I came back home to Texas, um, not knowing what to do or what I wanted to do or what I could do, um, Frank, who at that point was now a good friend of mine, uh, said, hey, why don't you come come be my drum tech? Um, and I, because I had nothing nothing else to, to do at the time, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, you know, sure, why not, you know? <laughs> you know. I mean, Believe me, the last thing, the curse of a drummer is having to schlep all your crap and set it up so that you get to play. And then right. you got to tear it down and, you know, everybody else kind of carries one guitar in and the singer carries a, a microphone, maybe, you know, and the drummer has to carry, you know, a mountain of crap and set it up. So so the, the idea of setting up someone else's gear so they can play is, you know, is not a natural thing. You know, it's, uh, but... I did it. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, I think it's so cool, you know, the way you, uh, you basically customize those drum kits with your artwork, but it goes above and beyond just painting, from what I understand. You don't just paint them. Did I yeah. see that there was a project you had where you had like over 10,000 Swarovski crystals that you put on this? Oh, way more than that. The first, the first, yeah. Most of the time it's all paint, but I'm always looking for uh new things you try never to repeat yourself or anything and actually the first uh, crystal kit i did was for a band called mana out of uh out of mexico okay. I've, I've, been, I've been painting drums for them for almost 30 years wow. and they're huge if you don't speak spanish no you probably you may not have ever heard of them i have but not. they are huge they're, this tour they're on right now they they're doing seven sold out shows at the forum wow so they're huge all over the world right so on. Uh, Alex Gonzalez is the drummer there. He's a good friend of mine too, okay. and he he's the first one that came up with wanting to do a, a crystal drum kit back in 2011. Um, so that one that one I think was about 15,000 crystals, and you got to glue them one at a time. There's like no shortcut, wow. so it's tedious. But the next uh, I've done two two more crystal kits for for Joey and Aerosmith. And uh, uh, each one of those is over 40,000. Wow, that's insane. Now, John, I got to ask you, I'm curious, and I'm sure there's a lot of other drummers out there that got to be curious as well. Uh, just because of the nature of drumming, you know, you're pounding away on this. H how, how did the crystals not go flying all over the place? Well, I did a little, I did a little R&D, but went back with the, with, um, the Mana kit um, because we had time to do it, and I'd never done it before, obviously, so... I contacted a, a Swarovski distributor and told him what I was doing. And of course, they're like, "Well, I don't know." <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay. So they sent me a couple of different adhesives, a couple of different glues, and some stones. And so I glued them on um, an old drum shell that I had here at my shop, and I just put it on my kit and I played it for a while. And I don't know, I don't remember how long, how long, maybe maybe a week or two, you know. To try to just put it, put it through the test, and and it seemed fine. Wow. So that's what I that's what I used, and uh, that's what I've been using. And it, it every once in a while, you'll get a casualty. One, you know, one will pop off. But I'm you know I'm talking about one or two over the lifetime of a of a tour. And I even glued them on the on the kick drum head, and that gets a lot of vibrate. It's vibrating constantly, and those stay on. So it's wow. it's. It's rock solid. That's yeah. amazing. That's incredible. That seems like it should be like a sponsor for you or something like that, you know? Yeah. Like that's. A, I just think of the crazy glue commercials back in the day when the dude would like put crazy glue on the top of his helmet and then he would stick himself to a steel girder, you know? Yeah. Like if he falls, you're done. Splat, you know? Something like you got here, man. It would be like the same thing, you know? Like, look at this. You know, you can have 40,000 crystals all over a drum kit with a guy like Joey Kramer banging away on it, and none of them fall off. Yeah. 
That's yeah. that'd be some commercial. There should be a commercial like that shot. Of course, I'm probably giving someone an idea right it's now. A very narrow market. Yeah, <laughs> I would imagine <laughs> it is. Yeah, that, that can't be cheap. That definitely yeah, cannot no. be cheap. But uh, in terms of the other kinds of artwork that you do, now I'm totally ignorant, and I got some friends right now that are watching. I mean, probably Allison, most of all, you know, and then my friend Tom, you know, over at Wentworth. Uh, obviously, they know everything about art inside and out. For me, it's like, you know, impressionism, acrylic, oil, abstract. I don't know. You know, I, I, I just, I love art just to see it just from a purely visual perspective. I appreciate art like that, but I don't understand all the technical ins and outs of it. So as far as your predominant style of artwork, like, you know, with like, I don't want to call them sketches. They're not sketches, but like, you know, like the black and white drawings that, you know, I've seen of Steve Tyler and, you know, Joe Perry, so many of the other artists that you've done, what kind of style of art is that? Um, well, it's, 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 they're not drawings, they're paintings. They're, it's, okay, acrylic, okay. it's acrylic on yes. canvas. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's, I don't, I don't regard it as photo realism, although a lot of people will say, wow, that looks like a photograph. And, uh, I think they mean it as a compliment. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, it, absolutely. It does. In a portrait, you, you want it to look like the person ideally. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I, and I've kind of changed my my style in the last three or four years. I used to be 100% airbrush. Okay. Because uh, 100% and um, in everything that I did. And I had to learn that when I started painting drums and guitars because everybody wanted that airbrush look and, and just the nature of uh, the finishes. You want the the paint to be as as flat as possible, not build up, no, no film build up and everything. So... Uh, so it was nothing but airbrush. And then maybe three or four years ago, I was painting a, a portrait on canvas and I did the whole thing in, in airbrush like I normally do. And it was done. And then I, and then there was, it was a painting of Keith Richards, a portrait of Keith Richards Wow. and current Keith Richards, you know, with the face and all the character and the cry. He's got yeah, this we'll have to show that. We, I, I got to put that up on the screen yeah. here. Yeah. He's got this really deep like wrinkle crack crevice in his face and I just couldn't get it I just wasn't I wasn't happy with what I had and so I got like a regular paintbrush which I never use and I dipped it in the paint and then I started using a regular paintbrush just to just to sharpen this one crease in his face and I liked it and then I painted the entire painting again over it with a with a paintbrush wow. instead of an airbrush and and so I, I never stopped and that's and that's pretty much what I've done ever since without the airbrush now I just use uh, paintbrushes and 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 ninety ninety percent of the painting that I do is when I'm on tour I paint in my hotel rooms on days off oh, so good. so now I have I carry minimal minimal supplies I carry like rolled up canvas in a PVC pipe. Uh, that I take to hotel walls and I carry black paint and white paint and a few paintbrushes and I mix my paint on a 10 inch drum head and uh, that's all I carry and but I like black and white anyway uh, but it it, it uh, helps to cut down on what I'm carrying on the road so um, most of my portraits are black and white on canvas um, about 30, 36 by 48 or 40 by 50, about that size average. Um, anyway. Very cool. Yeah. No, dig it. Now I'm curious. Do you use a visual when you're painting? Like, do you have something that you're looking at when you're painting or is it literally yeah. just from your memory? No, I, I work from photographs. I usually okay. work two or three different photographs. I try never to, I try never to copy one particular photograph, uh, unless, I have permission from the photographer. Right on, uh, right on. And that's gray area. I know a lot of a lot of really good, well-respected artists paint from one photograph. Right. You know, I try to respect uh, the copyright. copyright. Yeah, it's a that it is, and it is a gray area. And I know instances where photographers. My wife's actually a photographer, and yeah, I mean, you know, for someone to go out and paint the exact likeness of that photo without getting 
permission or, or some kind of copyright release. Yeah, it's cool. And then, of course, you being a musician and a painter, I think it's awesome that you respect that and that you acknowledge that. That's really cool. But I've never heard of anyone necessarily using multiple different visuals to create one specific piece. But that is what you do. That's that's so yes, interesting. I, I build it in Photoshop. Okay. I, I, I get the images and, you know, for instance, I'll do, let's say I, I like the, the head or the face of this photo and I like the body of this photo and I like the left hand of this photo and then I'll, I'll build it. It's very risky because sometimes you get something that doesn't look normal, you know, because you're talking about proportions and you're talking about different lighting, you know, because they're different photos. So you got you to gotta be very careful. And uh, I try to do it way in advance. So what I try to do is, is, is build it in Photoshop and then live with it, meaning um, I'll print it out or uh, save it as a JPEG and put, like, put it on my phone. And then I'll just kind of look at it every couple of days or whatever and um, until I forget what I changed, meaning oh. does it look natural to me? Does it look like something, yeah, I want to paint that. that. That looks good. That looks totally natural. I love the pose, blah, 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 to where I forget what I changed then that that tells me that hopefully that that it's a good image and I'm I'm ready to paint it and then I'll I'll just print it out on a piece of paper and and paint from from that right on very interesting very interesting now um, as you were on the Aerosmith residency when you were you know working with those guys doing a more than admirable job filling in for Joey Kramer while he was ill were there any particular pieces of art were there any paintings that you were doing at that time like would yeah, they be yeah. some of your most recent pieces yeah 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 was, well, let's see the first leg I did um, a painting of uh, Dave Grohl playing guitar oh right on okay so what's that fresh okay yeah 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 that's that was on the first the first Vegas residency, which is a three week period. So I painted that in my hotel room. Oh, that's a great one. Then, yeah. The end of that, at the end of that run, the last two shows, those are the two shows that I, that I played uh, first at the, at the very end of that residency. And so, um, the second, yeah, yeah. The second Vegas residency, uh, I painted a portrait of Steven Tyler uh, <sighs> because I felt like, okay, well, I just sh shared the stage with him. I just, uh, you know, I mean, I just played played drums, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago or whatever. So now I'm going to paint a, a portrait of, of Steven Tyler. So, uh, yeah. So I'm always, I always have something in my hotel room. That's awesome. Now, have David and Steven seen these uh, portraits that you did of them? Uh, Steven has seen his just uh, just a couple of weeks ago. What do you think? Yeah, he, lo yeah, he loved it. I would think so. Yeah. Now, what about Grohl? Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't. Really? I don't have to really? to him, but I, I know I can, I can get it some somehow. No, it's yeah, just, I would think it wouldn't be that hard. Small world, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah, I would imagine so. Now you're in your studio right now, yeah. Yeah, one yeah. of your studios at least. Now, from what I see in the background, there is that your artwork in the background. Yeah, this is this is in progress. Um, nice. nice. This is uh, so it's un, you know it's it's just canvas. Um, tack to the wall. Who is that? That is, uh, or will be, Amy Winehouse. Oh yeah, right on. Oh man, that's uh, you great. know, I tried her to show a painting before it's done. This is not done, so it's in progress. Very cool. Now, how can people get your artwork, or how how can people? I mean, if there are drummers out there, say you know, relatively unknown drummers with a big budget, you know, and they want a John Douglas special. You know, is are you a contractor for hire in that world? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's it's. I get I do commissions. You know, for I get I get questions like, do you do commissions for regular people? You know, like of course. You know. <laughs> yeah. So um, so how does everyone? Uh, yeah, through my website, you can email me. Okay, through your website, and that is dot com. John John, Doug John Douglas dot com. com. All right. Very very yeah. cool. Very cool. Yeah. So. Uh, you're working on the Amy Winehouse right now. I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but uh, what's next? Are you uh, are you back uh, doing any? Are you going to be teching for any more of the Aerosmith work uh, moving forward? Yeah. Have you are, yeah. are you working with other bands? What's going on? Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm with Aerosmith throughout this year. Okay. Um, 
So that doesn't leave a lot of time to do anybody else. I mean, my main, I've been with Van Halen for 22 years. Wow. All right. Uh, so that's my, uh, you know, if, if Van Halen called tomorrow and said, hey, we're, you know, we're starting next week, that's where I would go You'd because be I'm there the, the longest. Very cool. I don't, I don't tech for ZZ Top anymore, but I still paint all their drums and awesome. uh, build their mic stands and I still do all that stuff. So uh, in between the Vegas residencies, I did a, I did a, the new ZZ Top drum kit with their mic stands and the drum riser and all that. And then right after that, I did a new Mana kit. They're out on tour now. So I did that uh, between the Vegas residencies. So it's been a very busy year. And this little break right here is the first time I've been home without having a, a crunching uh, deadline hanging over me Man. on any you know, this one is whenever I don't finish it, um, I'll finish it. You know, right so I can relax a little bit and and chat with you. Uh-huh. Yes, and John, thank you so much for your time, man. I definitely do appreciate it. Uh, have you thought about uh, you know being in a band of like your own, starting your own band, or if you've got any other musician buddies out there actually where you are like the regular full time drummer? Do you have any projects like that going on? No, I have. I, then there's nothing more that I would love to do but the thing that the the main reason why i i stopped pursuing just playing drums is uh i got married and and had a kid and eventually you got to be or i had to be responsible and it's very difficult to i always half jokingly say i got the double whammy curse of both my passions and my careers have the prefix of starving starving artist starving musician (laughs) And I've, I've yeah. those. Oh man! Twice as hungry as the next guy, but I've been very blessed in that I I, I stay busy and I juggle the two. Like I say, I, I get to do both. Sometimes artwork on drums. Sometimes it's you know canvas and I paint guitars and a lot of other stuff. Um, and um, being a drum tech allows me to still be involved in the music business. And uh, you know I still play drums at sound checks they're not my drums and it's not my band right. but it's it's been enough i mean look there's there's nothing more appealing to me still at my age to that would be nothing more appealing than the opportunity to play drums for a living and 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 provide for my family by playing uh drums getting that's paid just, doing what you love that, I mean. that that still would be the optimum but but it's but it's it's a long shot so right. i you know, I can't afford to to starve. So I, I'll jam with buddies, you know, around town or whatever to get it out of my system, you know. But, uh, yeah, anyway. Awesome. Very, very cool. Now, as far as, like, uh, any gallery exhibits or anything like that, is your artwork currently on display anywhere? Uh, you know, as people are traveling around the country, is there anywhere they could go to see some John Douglas originals? Um, well, uh, the Hard Rock Cafes buy a lot of my stuff. So. Right. Uh, they bought a lot of drum kits that I painted for other bands. They end up at hard rock ca- cafes and they've bought a lot of, uh, of my canvas work. So you can see, I don't exactly know where they all are, okay. but, uh, but they're scattered literally all over the planet. And, um, I have some stuff that the uh, moose gallery in Beverly Hills and, uh, Robert kid va- uh, gallery outside of Detroit. I think it's Birmingham, Michigan and, uh, working on getting more, uh, gallery stuff because I'd, I'd really rather, you know, the, like I said, painting drums and guitars and I love it, but it's a very narrow market and and my real my real passion besides hitting drums and cymbals is portrait is is painting people right on canvas that's my real love and um, so yeah I, I was trying to push that more and more. Well, it definitely shows in the quality of your work. That is for sure. So again, everybody, we are here with drum tech extraordinaire and a phenomenal (laughs) artist and painter, John Douglas. John, thank you so much for your time. It has been absolutely awesome talking to you and uh, just hearing what an amazing life you have. I mean, really, it's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. uh, Anyone should aspire to be able to have some of the opportunities that you've had and to have the talent and the skill that you have. It's really amazing. Very cool to see. Thank you, Scotty. Yes, sir. All right. So everybody, again, I'm Scotty J. You are watching Rock Titan Live. We're out.